right. So everyone, Julie Fowler, Julie Fowler, everyone. Julie is a two-time elite coach and a five-star diamond and a kick-ass chick. She is amazing at creating trainings and doing calls and helping her team and being an amazing leader. And so we're super, super duper lucky that she raised him from eating to do our call for us. So without further ado, I'm going to mute myself so you can't hear me crunching. And oh, I'll mute everybody and then I'll unmute you. Hold on. And then we'll let you, you all unmute Julie. Mute myself. All right, and we'll let you take it away. So go for it, Julie. Okay, so, well, thank y'all for having me on the call. I asked Joan, like, I sent her, oh, I don't know, four or five topics of calls that I could do and asked her what she wanted me to talk about, and I had my fingers crossed that it was my story because that's super easy for me because it's all about me. But she asked for leadership, so I didn't really know what to do um, about leadership or what to say because – I don't think that I'm all the time the best leader. Um, I think that most people who are considered leaders in Beachbody don't think that they're the best leaders at all times. But I do know what I learned about being a leader. And um, so since we got guitars at Nashville, I'm gonna play y'all a little song about leadership that I wrote. I'm just kidding. I just wanted to see Joan's face when she thought that I was actually gonna play a song about leadership. <laughs> I actually don't know how to play the guitar. I do know six chords um, that Dennis taught me and my fingers almost bled, but that's about it. So let me start screen sharing. Um, here, ooh, I can remember. Okay, so I put this little call together this, uh, hold on, I can't do that because then I can't see y'all's faces. Um, let me spread this a little. So I, when don't ask me to talk about leadership, I thought, okay, I do not know how to teach somebody to be the perfect leader. All that I know is that I can tell um, you what I've learned about being a leader over the five years of my Beachbody career. Um, and then the things that I think are most important about leadership, in my opinion. So um, I titled the call Inspiring Leadership. And um, I just kind of want to talk about that because I think you can read that title in two different ways. So I think inspiring leadership can be both inspiring if you do it right, but it also inspires people to be leaders. Um, and that's what in my mind, whenever I think of leadership, I don't think about how well do I get people to follow me? How well do I have people that are marching behind me? I think about how many leaders are able to duplicate what I'm doing. Do I have followers or do I have leaders on my team? And so whenever I feel like I'm doing an awesome job leading people is when I see other people not following me, but leading beside me. And so that's kind of what I want to go with. And I wanted to start with this quote. It's kind of an obscure quote. You probably haven't really heard it. I don't actually know how I came across it, except that whenever I read it, it really hit me because it kind of speaks to me with how I feel a lot about Beachbody. Um, not everything that counts can be counted and not everything that can be counted counts. And so what this says to me is so many things and I'm gonna try to break it down in the way that I hear it in my mind and the way that it means something to me so that you understand it. But I think that it kind of um, in a weird way sums up how I feel that I have been best at leading people. So, you know, with Beachbody, we count everything. You count success goal points. How many challenge packs did you sell? How many volume points do you have? Um, what rank are you? What rank are you gonna be? Like there's a measure for everything in this business. Um, and I think that a lot of times when we're leading people, we start to think two things. Number one, am I a leader because the things that we count, I'm racking them up. You know, I've got all the points. I'm rank advancing. I've got, you know, the numbers in my volume to back it up. That's what's making me a leader. Um, are the people that are worthwhile to me also racking up those points? Like sometimes I think we get into that point mindset, like we're counting everything and that that's what's making it count for us. 
And so the thing that I've always tried to do, mainly not because I'm an awesome person and this is just where my heart initially started, but because in the beginning I realized that when I wasn't doing things that could be counted, I still counted to the people who were above me. And that made me feel important. That was what inspired me to step up and become a leader. Um, whenever I was asked to do my first team call, I was an Emerald coach that did not really want to work the business, but Dennis had bragged about me um, on Team Panacea for talking to someone about Turbo Jam or something silly like that back then. And Chris was like, you know what? You should be on the team call because you know, you came in this completely out and now you're talking to people. I had no clue what I was going to talk about. In fact, it was before video calls like this. I sat in a closet, my hands. I don't like to speak in front of people at all, um, at all. And I don't like to be in front of people for the most part. It makes me very anxious. So the first time I spoke on a call, my voice was shaking like this through the whole thing. And everybody commented about it after the call. And nobody even knew that I had like this horrible Texas accent that most people comment on because it was so shaky. They couldn't even decipher my days to do accent. And um, that's how shaky it was. I sat in a closet wrapped in a blanket with all the lights off because I couldn't focus unless I was in complete darkness to talk on that call. But after that call, I felt like the leader. Everybody built me up on the team page, how awesome I did. And it wasn't because I had done anything that you could actually count as a point or volume on the team, but that I made, I was made to feel like I counted. And that was important to me. That's what made me step up to be a leader. So whenever I think of inspiring leadership, I think about making everybody count, making everybody um, that is under you matter because that's really what we're here for, you know? We're not here because, or you're not gonna be invited or whatever to be part of my inner circle because of what you've done as far as Success Club or whatever. It's because of the person that you are. So anyways, that's just where I wanna kind of start with this because this is kind of my leadership style that, or that I feel like I strive to continue to have this leadership style because this has been important to me from the beginning. So, Whenever you start thinking about your leadership though, um, one thing that's really easy to do um, when you're rank advancing, when you're getting a lot of coaches under you, if you haven't really started to think about who you wanna be as a leader, um, what kind of coach you wanna be, sometimes you get into this business and you get running with it. And before you know it, you're, you know, got, five, six, 10, 12 people under you looking to you, maybe more, and they all want something from you. And suddenly your vision of why you started this business is totally askew because you're running this rat race of people who are coming to you and you're trying to work with them and please them and do everything for them. And before you know it, if you don't, you know, really grasp, okay, this is what kind of leader I want to be. This is what kind of team I have. If you don't take that early on and make it your own, um, I can tell you from experience that you will look up one day and you will be, you will feel more like your team is attacking and coming at you than you will. And it's not because they're doing anything wrong. It's just because you haven't come to terms with what kind of leader you haven't set a leadership vision for your team or cast a vision for your team you haven't gotten yourself organized you're just out there like going so I want to say that the first thing that you should do when you start to lead people and just stop today and do this is just start with why you started um we talked somebody talked about this at our super Saturday this weekend she was a girl that I can't even remember her name but you know she was like you know anytime that um, I feel lost in this business or I feel overwhelmed or I feel like I don't know what to do. I don't feel like a leader. I go back to why I started and I focus on those things. And that always brings me back to my roots in Beachbody. And once you're where you need to be with this business and you're in the right place with this business, you can lead people more effectively. So I think it's super important for you to always remember why did you become a coach? Like that's going to be important to you as it as important to you today as it was the day you first started. The reason that I became a coach was not for me personally, 
so that I could, you know, be in the Millionaires Club. Like if I'm in the Millionaires Club one day, I will be super excited about that. But, you know, on my dream board, like on the thing that says, this is what drives me in this business, like that's not it. It could be for somebody and that's not wrong. You know, that's not the wrong thing. But for me, that doesn't excite me. I don't, I don't jump for joy for that. You know, the reasons that we started being a coach was we wanted more time as a family. We wanted to be here. We wanted Dennis to not have to be a police officer. We've a, a, achieved all those things, but still being here as a family together and having that family time all the time is important to us. Um, we had some big goals as far as being able to not have to work so that we could do a lot of traveling and we've always felt really called into something missions wise and so there's that that we definitely have none of that has anything to do with my rank or the millionaires club but all of that can be achieved by me pushing my business but so focus on why you became a coach and stay there and the rest of it'll come if you start putting your focus and setting your eyes on other things you forget about who you are and we started in your roots in this and that's where you start to feel lost you hear a lot of people throughout coaching maybe say i feel really lost in this right now it's because you've kind of forgotten where you were um six months ago i felt completely lost in this business um, 100%. So one thing that I suggest that you do, oh, internet connection, do not be unstable, is to create a mission statement. And this is something that's very, for me, it was very hard to do. It took me a very long time to write anything out for my business as far as a mission statement, because I wanted it to be so long. And mine is actually very long, but I kind of short I'll share it with you at the end of the call, but I think you should definitely create a mission statement like what you want from Beachbody and what you want your life with Beachbody to look like, and then cast a vision for your team. So kind of create a mission statement, not just for you personally, but for your team. What kind of team do you want? Like what's your team vision? What do you want for the people in your team? And, you know, I want things for my team that are totally not rank related. You know, I want freedom for my team. I want my team to, you know, have so many different things in life that have nothing to do with their finances. You know, um, everybody's different. But anyways, I could talk about that forever. But you really need to have clarity about why you started and what you want from this business and you need to stick with it. And that's the first thing before you can help others follow their dreams. Like you need to really be sure what your dream is with this and what you want from this and stay grounded there. So just this little quote, like I really like it. Finding clarity is about eliminating options and aligning with your values. And that's what it's all about. What do you value in life? Like what is it that you truly want from this? So that aside, all the gushy, like heartfelt, you know, make a mission statement, love yourself first before you can love other people. Like that's super important. But now let's just like, these are some of my top tips about leadership that you're going to have to learn. So the 80, 20 rule, like we hear that all the time, 80% jabs, 20% hooks, whatever. But what about an 80, 20 rule of leadership? Because I think that a lot of times when you start to put people on your team, you start to make adjustments um, to your own personal workload. So 80% of your time should always be spent on your own business, always. And 20% of your time is spent on your coaches. And if you do leadership right, like some of you are going, ooh, this seems really out of line. You know, if, I've, if I'm a 15 star diamond one day, like I'm gonna have all these people, I'm gonna have to definitely not work as hard on me and my business, and I'm gonna have to put so much more to them. And it does feel that way. And it feels that way for me sometimes too. But I think that if you do this business right, it's totally doable because everything that you should be doing in your own business should be simple and duplicatable for your coaches to take over and to do themselves. So you should always, if you find yourself, okay, I'm out of whack. I'm spending 60% of my time coaching people, um, working on team pages, running training groups, that's what 60% of my time is and I barely have time for power hours and something's out of whack. And I'm gonna share like on some other slides like ways that you can make sure that you stay in check with this, but always spend time on you and your business. And your business is part of that is about you. It's about taking care of yourself, doing your workouts, reading personal development, 
being in line with the things that you need to be doing as a coach, because when you're doing the things that you should be doing as a coach, it's easier to lead people to do those things. It's so much easier to be authentic when you're, you know, authentic when you're, that you're telling people to do. So spend 80% of your time doing the things that you want your team to duplicate. You've got to do power hours. You've got to work out. You've got to drink Shakeology. You've got to read personal development. You've got to be posting in challenge groups. You've got to be posting in the team page. All the things that you want your best coaches to be doing. And then I just had to add this because this is one of my major excuses. Anytime that I start to slip in my business, I always pull out my most noble excuse ever is that the reason that I had a slower month is because I was helping so many other people have awesome months. And that's it. It's easy to ignore that and to say, oh, but that sounds so good. Like that was the right thing to do, right? Like I, I, I personally was on the phone with so many coaches making it happen. And really what you're doing is not sustainable. It's not, you cannot help five people, you know, the way that, and don't lie, you know how you help some people, because I know that I've walked some people through some stuff and it's not easy. You cannot sustain that and continue your coaches. You have to get duplicatable. You have to be able to teach people to do things on their own. And so it's really easy to not work your business as hard as you grow a team and become a leader um, because it, it sounds so good when you say it. You know, it's a very noble excuse. And Dennis reminds me of that all the time. That's a great excuse. That sounds really noble, but it's not true. Like you have got to show. And then I just put this, don't show, tell me, show me. And that's pretty much your whole team. Like they want you to be the one, like the best way to teach anybody anything is to show them how to do it. And that's just the truth. And so do the things that you're asking people to do and they'll follow you. So leadership too, this is one thing that I wanted to touch on. I know that I'm kind of all over the place, but like I said, I really don't, like I only know the tips that I know the tips for, I'm sorry. So sacrifice, like this is another thing that I, I, I know we use the word sacrifice um, a lot in this business. And I, eh, I mean, I kind of like to say, you know, what are you willing to sacrifice for this business? But at the same time, um, what's worth your sacrifice? And so I just kind of want to touch on that because I don't feel like I can wholeheartedly tell my coaches, you've got to sacrifice everything for the next two years to build this business the way that you want it. And then, you know, Dave Ramsey's quote, live like no one else so you can live like no one else. Those are awesome quotes. Keep them in context though. Dave Ramsey, I took one of his courses, live like no one else so you can live like no one else is not Dave Ramsey telling you to shut yourself in a bedroom for two years and build a business um, and be on Facebook all the time and your cell phone so that you can live like no one else. You will live like the whole world. You will live. He's telling you to live your life responsibly for two years so that you can live your life like no one else. He's not telling you that everything's worth the sacrifice. So just keep that in mind. Like I know like most coaches kind of cringe when you tell them like not everything is worth the sacrifice, but not everything is worth the sacrifice. So I want you to think reasonably. Like when you're working your business, what do you think of when you think of sacrifice? And I just put that definition there, an act of giving something value up for the sake of something else that you regard as more important or more worthy. So before you say, I'm going to sacrifice something, I want you to ask yourself, what are you giving up? And is it more important or more worthy than what you're doing? So beach body, what's more important or more worthy than beach body? Okay, TV, absolutely. It's definitely can be more important or more worthy. Your kids basketball game, negative. It is not more important or more worthy than your kids basketball game, period. You should be at your kids basketball games. Um, is it more important or more worthy than, you know, when your husband's home on leave from the military? Like I have coaches who say, I want to be part of that training group, but my husband's on home for a week and then he's going back to Afghanistan until December. That is not more important or more worthy than this business. It is not. That is not what these quotes mean when they say live your life like no one else so you can live your life like no one else. Your husband and your kids 
and things in your life are important and worthy more than this. But I also like the quote, and I screw this up every time, and usually I have to have Dennis um, say it for me. <laughs> so I'm going to try really hard. And um, the quote is, you have to be selfish with your time when it's not inconvenient for those people in your life that are more important. I think that's how it goes. So what that means is if you need two hours to work your business and your kid has a softball tournament all day that day, but you have to work your business and you typically wake up at seven, you better wake up at four thirty or five. Like that's when it's the right time. And that's how you do that. Okay. And then you watch the, the game whenever you're, if you know, I have to work my business tonight, but I also have dinner out with my friends, but I need to do a coach call. You don't do the coach call while you wait for the table and while you're in the call, in the car. You have to make sacrifices. Maybe you have to do that on your lunch break and miss out on, you know, having that quiet time in the break room where you're reading books. So just really, I want y'all to just think as your leaders, like I know that it's drilled in, sacrifice, sacrifice. Are you willing to sacrifice to make it happen? And I do want you to realize there are things worth giving up to have this dream. And then there are things that are more important and more worthy than this, that you have to be more selfish with your time and say, look, my sleep is not as important to me today. I can do this. Maybe I go to bed an hour later, you know, like you have to figure it out. That's how I figured it out whenever I was growing up in this business. And it's very easy to lose sight of it. And again, it's another noble excuse, especially if you can tack um, a quote that you've misquoted along with it. It's a noble excuse. So I can versus we can. Um, this is another point of leadership because anybody who steps into a leadership role almost always is a little bit of a control freak. Um, at least I know that I am. Or you definitely enjoy the feeling of leading people to success. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I love it when a coach tells me, you know, because of your help this month, I was able to do this. Like, that feels really awesome. Like, it's amazing. Um, and you crave that as a leader most of the time. Like, we're helping people. Um, but I really want you to think leadership is not, you know, just about you leading. It's about you duplicating other leaders that can help you lead. So definitely think of, am I saying constantly, I can do da-da-da, I can do da-da-da on the team page, or are you saying we can do? Because I found myself, you know, I can do a sneak peek coming up. I can start a, you know, challenge group. I can do this. I can do that. You've got to totally change your verbiage to we because the thing that's going to happen as a leader is you're going to get real mad real quick when you're like, why am I only the one running sneak peeks? And then you go back and you look at how you word it. And every single time you've said, I can, I can, and you just put it out there and you're just, you know, you're running yourself in the ground. So these are just some things. Tired and cranky is not your best look. And it doesn't inspire other people to want to be a leader under you. If I look at you and you're a tired mess all the time, it doesn't make me go, I want that. I can't wait till I'm at that point. Nobody wants it. Okay. You want to show people that it's doable with, you know, a busy schedule and able to do it together and people want to feel valued and people want to do it with you. Like your team wants to, the leaders on your team want you to give up the reins. Like they want you to let them help out and feel more important because you cannot do it all. And it's tiring and it's stressful for your coaches to see you always tired and stressed. Um, your coaches, I mean, they're people just like you. They have a heart for people. That's why they're coaches. When they see their coach tired and stressed and anxious all the time, it hurts them. Like they feel that you're projecting that into your team when you're tired and stressed. Instead, you should just join hands with your team and make it fun and make it about the team. And don't be afraid to be in a leadership role, but in a leadership role that lets other people lead with you. You're not, it's being a leader is not about being on stage and you being the person, you know, it's about everybody. It's just not sustainable. So just this quote, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And that is so true in this. You can do a whole lot really quick by yourself. Um, I have coaches that have definitely done it. Um, one in particular that comes to my mind. And But it's not easy to stay there. <laughs> I won't go there. Let me move past. So organization, leadership, organization. That's, you know, and I put LOL after it because let's get real. Okay. Organization. 
every week. Let's start afresh. But let me tell you the things that I know. You do need duplicatable systems for your team. But when you decide, when you get off this call today, like I had coaches come back from Summit. I'm ready to lead. I'm going to do this and that. And what have they done since Summit? They have spent every waking hour of their time creating trainings and email systems and getting on AWeber to create. And you can do all that. That's awesome. But you don't have to do it today. Whenever I create a new training, the best thing that I've ever done for myself is create the training as I go, copy and paste, and save it in Evernote. Perfect it later. You know, come back to it later. Same thing, I'm creating email systems now for new coaches and I will create them one at a time as I send them out. And that's how I do it. Because you can spend all day doing that or you can do the one that you need to do today and move on past it. And you do need groups and trainings for your team, but you do not need all the groups and trainings. This is hard for me. My heart is training people. And so I want everybody to be trained so perfectly that I want them to all have a group you know, if you're a redheaded coach who has freckles, then this is your diamond group. I want my, you know, if you like dogs, this is your diamond group. I'm just kidding. I'm not that bad, but you know, like you kind of feel that way sometimes where you're just, if you want to be an Emerald coach next week, you're in this group. If you want to be a diamond coach in a month, join this group. If you're looking to, you know, just be more accountable. Here's a group. Here's a group for this and this military spouses and people get in this group. And then before you know it, you've got all these amazing groups that you've created lovely cover photos for and pick monkey and everything is all perfect in them. And then by the time you're done, you're exhausted and you have 10 groups that you're trying to run and you're pulling your stinking hair out. So you do need training groups, but you don't need all the groups. <laughs> and I think of that little guy, ah, the groups, you don't need them. Like you can prioritize. Um, and create a team calendar, shorten your groups, don't run groups concurrently if you do need a lot of groups, like try to break them up. Um, and then let your team help you run the groups. The people who step up and lead can run groups. That's very hard for me to swallow because I do not like to give up control. But if someone doesn't post what I put in Evernote the way that I put it in Evernote and they ad lib something that I don't like, it'll be okay. Okay, if their quote picture, like I did let the reins go and they put a quote in there that was kind of a lover kind of quote. It was very sweet, but it had like two people like hugging and I was like, it doesn't go with training. The world's going to implode, but it didn't and nobody really noticed. So it was okay. Business hours. Oh my gosh. I should have put R-O-F-T-L and B or whatever that thing is after these because who struggles with business hours? The whole world. Every this world struggles with business hours. Um, we set business hours and then we file them an hour after we set them and that is how it goes. It's a struggle and you know why? Because it's an addiction and it truly is. You're addicted to this um, and that's not a word I like to hear. I don't want to be addicted to this, but you know, addicted to anything because to me that's negative, you know, and it can be, I promise you. So business hours, this is where the weight of leader, leadership can definitely pull you under because so many people want you and need your help. And if you don't set firm hours, you will um, work your fingers to the bone. And I did not quit a 40 hour job to work 40 hours. I just didn't. Um, this is where you have to set your own personal preferences, um, honestly, and it has to be what works with your lifestyle and your values and your own mission statement. That's where you have to, you know, figure this out for yourself. It's going to be a personal decision for everybody. I have two kids. I have a lot going on. I choose to work a max of three hours a day. That's my choice. I don't say that I work 15 hours a week and, and expect that I'm going to be triple 15 star this year or even 15 star. But that's my decision. That's my priorities and in line with my life. Okay. So set business hours that are realistic to your goals. You know, don't tell, don't tell your team, you know, I want to be an elite coach this year and I'm going to work 30 minutes a day because I don't have my priorities straight. You can definitely have your priorities straight but you're not gonna hit those goals. Like you have to adjust. So business hours are important, not so much as how many hours you're willing to work, but how well you stick with it. 
there's important people in your life who matter. Um, when I would bring homework from the bank or people bring homework from other jobs um, and sit at the dinner table and do it, it's a distraction. It's rude. Your family deserves more of you than that. And you wouldn't probably do it without thinking if you were, you know, if I worked at the bank, I wouldn't bring customer files home and sit down at the dinner table and spread them out and start working on them. Like I would think again, but for some reason it's more socially acceptable to do it with coaching and it's easier to do it with coaching. And when I say socially acceptable, I don't really mean it because it's really rude. <laughs> but anyway, so the thing is, is we work on our cell phones, we're on social media, and those can both be very good things, but I think that one challenge that I gave my team is to set business hours and just one day or two days when you're not in your business hour time to not be on social media. Like when you're, because let's think about it. You work on Facebook or Instagram or wherever, right? You work there. That's your job. I don't, when I would get off work at the bank, I didn't sit in the lobby and chill and talk to the customers after I got off work. I headed to my car and I came home because I separated my work from my personal time. Same thing, I managed a restaurant. I didn't sit in the booth and have dinner after my job. I separated myself from my work and my personal time. It was a just, you know, and so I kind of set myself down and thought, this is the difference is I'm not separating business from personal time. Um, when I'm on the couch, like I told my coaches, I'm like, I want you to ask yourself when you're on the couch with your family watching TV, when you're at the dinner table with your husband and your kids, when you're at basketball games, does your whole newsfeed need to come? Like, is it really that important? Absolutely not. What you're telling people is that they're not interesting enough, that they're not important enough, and that you have better things to be doing at that moment. And that's just the truth. And I know that like, it's like, oh, that's so in my face. Like I hate hearing that because I was just on the phone while I was eating. It was in our face too, like totally in my face. Um, but it's important to separate that time, not only because you're not gonna burn out, but if not all your spouses are on board, like, you know, Joan and Ryan and me and Dennis, we work together, it's gonna cause problems. And that's just that. So truth, your work can be both the most fulfilling and the most emotionally draining pre part of your life. And that is true. And that doesn't just mean beach body. That means just your work in general can emotionally drain you or it can be really fulfilling, but it's about boundaries and creating boundaries and creating limits in your life and saying, this is where I stand with my priorities. And this is, you know, this is where my work ends and where life starts. So those are my tips on leadership. Um, I did say that I would share my, this is my, this is my shortest mission statement ever. And it's super long, um, actually, but this is just like a super short one that, you know, I have like on my desktop, like this is what, um, this is what I want to do. This is my priorities in my life. And so I do challenge you to create that for yourself because I do think that it is like really good to say, what is most important to me in this? Like, what is it? Maybe your mission statement is, is I wanna be in the Millionaires Club by the end of this year and to do that, I will help X amount of people and whatever, and there's nothing wrong with that. But just know where your priorities lie and then stay true to them. And that's all that I've got. And I told um, Jackson and I didn't only talk for 30 minutes. <laughs> so I think I did, maybe. That was such a, like, um, <clears throat> you knew that wasn't going to happen. You're, you're Julie Fowler. Your trainings always go long. Um, that was awesome, though. How many people love that? I love it. Yeah, I think that, yeah. where'd, you, where'd you go? I really love that, like, relating it back to Dave Ramsey, where he says, if you want to live like no one else, you have to live like no one else. And it is true, but how many other people do you know come home and don't, you know, don't watch TV all the, all night? You know, so many people go and put their kids to bed and then they just sit in front of the, the TV like couch potatoes. Or, you know, they wake up just, just in time to like get ready for work and run to work. Um, or, you know, they're, they're like all of those things. So trading in those things that aren't important and spending your time working your business there is important. And I think also one of the key things that we got from Summit is 
expressing to your significant other specifically what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it. And then working as a team, having them help you with other things that need to be done around the house or with kids or whatever it may be so that like you can both get your stuff done quicker and then get back together quicker. Um, and so I, I really liked that because it doesn't mean 24 seven. I mean, I said business hours where Friday night is date night, like regardless of what has happened all week, how busy I've been all week. You know, there's definitely nights where both of us work till midnight every single night. Um, and then Fridays, it doesn't matter. Five o'clock, he walks through that door. If he hasn't done a workout yet, we'll do it together. And then we go and have date night. Saturday mornings, I find are super good for my business. So if I need to help a coach or I need to reach out for and get my power hour done, I do. But then I'm done and I move on and we have our Saturday together. And Sundays should be family time too. Um, of course, I don't work a full-time job anymore. So it is slightly different. I think when you work still at a full-time, uh, full-time at another place outside the house, then yeah, you might need to spend a couple hours on Sunday, but make sure that you're setting those hours being really productive during that time. Cause how many of us can jump on Facebook and just get lost and like F off for hours on end and really not get anything accomplished whatsoever. Yep. I mean, are we really working for those six hours that were on Facebook or were you just perusing the newsfeed and commenting on stuff? So great call. I think, you know, it's all about empowering your leaders to be leaders and, and, and doing what you need to do. Love it. Thank you, Julie. Hi, Jack. Jackson. Yes, he wants me to come watch I Love Lucy with him. <laughs> you got some yeah. spoiling to do. Yeah, Lucy. Lucy. We're weird. We like old shows, so now that we're done. Go watch Nick uh, tonight. You watch are yourself. weird. <laughs> all right. Love you. Thank you so much for sharing with all of us. You're welcome. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Love you.